to another episode holiday special of Planet Hunters Coffee Chat. I'm your host, Cassie Falongo, and of course, joining me, amazing Nora Eisner. Nora, good to see you. Happy holidays. Nice to see you. Happy holidays. Oh my gosh. And wherever you're joining us in the world, whether you celebrate or not, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Seasons Greetings. Thank you for joining us on this crazy journey that we've been on for the last six months. I hope that you've been enjoying it. I know you've been enjoying it because we've been getting some great feedback and comments and everything from you guys. So we thought it'd be nice to just wrap up the year, have a little, I don't know, silly 12 days of Christmas, but not really eight days of Christmas with the light curves kind of thing. You know, we wanted to do something a little bit fun and special. So uh, 12 days of Christmas, but not 12 days of Christmas at all. (laughs) Exactly. You know, so it's like a holiday special, but not like a holiday special. Love it. (laughs) It's like the remix version. So As always, we hope that you're bringing your coffee, your tea, your spiked eggnog, you know, of choice, Um, you know, join us with this. So I'm looking forward to it. I haven't seen it, but Nora promises me that it's going to be something really cute and holiday-ish. So uh, let's see. Let's get into it, Nora. So we've got light curves to talk about, light curves of the week. We do. Almost 12, almost like 12 days of light curves, Um, but we're doing eight because we thought 12 was too many. Um, <laughs> fair, fair. <laughs> All right, let me show my screen. All right. Ooh. So this is our first light curve of of the day. Um, mm-hmm. So as you might have noticed from our last episode about light curves and about all the light curve episodes we've done so far, light curves can look very, very different and they can look really, really complicated. So often I look at light curves and I have no idea what it's showing. Um, So when that happens, there's one trick that usually works. So Mm -hmm. I'm gonna um, try it this time. So this is, this might not work at home, but I'm gonna gonna try it now. If I don't understand a light curve, I usually go, Carl. we've got a cole joining us special guest cole oh my god good to see you and in his christmas jumper oh bless thank Thank you you very much i wish you may not but it's not (laughs) you may not have a cole at home but for the purposes of today you will have a cole at home so cole what can you tell us about this light curve well there seem to be a couple of things happening here I think we can Mm -hmm. see that uh, there are a lot of dips downwards Mm -hmm. and as well as two different kinds of like upward brightening kind of things happening. And just from looking at it, I think we can tell that this is some sort of uh, eclipsing binary where the downward bits are when two, the two stars are going around one another and they periodically block the light from one another in front with, with respect to us seeing it. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's what causes the dips. Now, the brightening is from the fact that the stars are distorted. When you put the two stars really close to one another, they're no longer, you know, ball-shaped. They actually turn into these weird teardrop or rugby ball-shaped kind of things. Oh, wow. And that's known as tidal distortion. So that's what we're seeing that causes these difference, the, the brightening as you move outside of uh, the eclipses. So in a, in a standard eclipse binary, you would have kind of a when they're not distorted, you'd have almost a flat line and then you have the dips, those kind of odd and even shaped dips coming down from a flat line. But what Cole is saying with the distortion, that's these kind of like hats. I think they look like hats. Um, I think they look like hats too. I was thinking of like uh, Christmas stockings or something a little bit. Maybe I've got Christmas on the brain, but yeah, uh uh-huh, I can see it. (laughs) Well, wouldn't the eclipses be the stockings? They're the things that come down in a little boot shape. Oh, yeah. Very on the nose. I love it. It's very good. Very clever. So it's just so explain once more why it's a distorted eclipsing binary. So it's really fun because stars are big, right? And when they're when you have two stars right next to one another, they kind of pull on each other and they pull on each other so much that the the that their shape is no longer a, a ball. It doesn't look like a sphere anymore. It pulls it towards the other star. And if you have two stars that are close enough, it starts to look like a peanut. They actually mm-hmm. kind of pull each other so much that they start to look in this distorted teardrop kind of shape. And when they touch, they look like peanuts. 
That's fantastic. I love it. Great explanation and a wonderful visual. I have an idea now what that looks <laughs> like. But how can you relate it to Christmas? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine Talking. you have two, two jingle bells near one another and they're orbiting one another, but uh -huh. they're, so, they're so massive that they don't look like jingle bells anymore and they kind of function <laughs> poorly as bells. <laughs> I love it. I swear, you guys, we don't actually put alcohol in our drinks. This is just our natural state of being. We like to have fun with this stuff. <laughs> That's fantastic. Is there anything else that you can tell us about distorted eclipsing binary? Or do you think that's enough for everybody for right now while they're going through? <laughs> that's enough for this one we have we have okay almost 12 of these to get through so <laughs> let's go number two number two love All right. it this is also a very fun one that Ooh. i would this would be another example where i would say call and then he yeah comes in and and explains this one um so take it away okay yeah. so this is another really fun type of eclipsing binary and you can see that it's an eclipsing binary again because you have these dips in light mm -hmm. And again, the fun thing is, is that we see these brightenings, as Nora had said, if they're just some regular eclipsing binary, it would be a flat line in between the dips. But right. we have this, this, these little, you know, similar shaped hats this time. The, the, the tops of the houses are all the same height. Mm -hmm. And the other interesting thing is you see that there's really weird wiggles happening in there. And those are, those are actually yeah. pulsations. So oh, the stars are okay. ringing. They, they have heart, uh, star quakes and they're, they're doing their own ringing and that, that makes them change in brightness over time. So the tops of the uh, gingerbread houses are brighter and yes. when it drips and it's basically like a pulse of, so, okay, sorry, so silly question. How can you tell it's not a pulsar if that's the case? Pul pulsars are a bit of a misnomer. Mm -hmm. Okay. So okay. A, pul a pulsar is referring to a neutron star. So that's a very, ah. that's much in the future evolution of, of, of stars and much heavier stars. Okay. And Good to know. Very different kind of thing. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is a pulsating star, but I can okay. also tell you that this is something that's known as an algal type binary. And you can tell because they have this tidal distortion that gives you these, these uh, the hats that give you the hats. And you have two eclipses that are very different depths. So they're narrow eclipses, one's very deep, one's kind of shallow. And the reason that they're like this is that one star is massive and hot and the, the other star is a little less massive and cool. Mm. And then so the hotter star has the deeper eclipse. When, when the cool star goes in front of the hot star, it goes deeper. And when the hot star goes in front of the cool star, it's more shallow. Right. The really, the really fun thing about this type of system is the way that they've got to be like this is that they've actually traded mass from, from one star to the other. Whoa. Okay. That's incredible. Yeah. Stars so, do really weird things. They do really weird things. Is this one of your favorite types? If you I had to say it's one of your favorites. Yes, it is, but they are very okay. confusing. We don't, we, we know what happens, but it's, there's so many physics that go into it. It's really crazy. And you can lose a year of your life looking into them. <laughs> You're not speaking from experience, I take it. No, no, no. For <laughs> me, it's like... There's not just one. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a long period of time when no one, where the people saw these and they didn't know how they could have formed um, because it took them a while, to, I guess, to get to this conclusion that they must have transferred the mass and to result in, in what they are now. So stars are very, very confusing. Mm-hmm. Then. But also kind of exciting to, to see different things like this. Of course, we're always looking for exoplanet candidates when you're going through it, but it's kind of cool to see the different light curves. I mean, it's something different to look at. All right, so number three, let's 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 move on down the track here. All right. Whew, okay. What um, the heck is this? Lots going on. Different frequencies of pulsations. Uh-huh. My work here is done. She just explained it. <laughs> I mean, this looks like a Christmas scarf, basically. You've, you've got a Christmas scarf going on. Yeah, right? Okay, thank you. I did my one contribution for today. <laughs> my single contribution. All right. All right, so we have a star. It is pulsating. It is, again, um, vibrating like a bell, but it's vibrating not just at one frequency, not at one pitch. It's vibrating at multiple pitches, which are close to one another in their frequencies, which means you get this almost beat pattern 
um, happening that you see here. Um, because the, the beats, the, or the, not beats, the frequencies that, that the star is pulsating at um, uh, kind of sometimes cancel each other out and sometimes um, kind of make a bigger pulsation, which makes you see this kind of up and down scatter. Right, right. right. That's very correct. Okay. If you've ever noticed you're sat in traffic and you see two lights that are blinking right next to one another, and one of them's a little bit faster than the other, and then they kind of sync and up they, and they, they yep. sync up and go out of sync. That's exactly the same. Oh my gosh. I always wondered about that. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, what is happening? And I'm like, am I just really bored driving to work today or something? Thank you for explaining that. And that's amazing. I love it. This is probably, um, my favorite one so far just because it's all over the place i mean there's a lot going on here yeah, yeah very cool very oh. yeah all right so let's move on number four right. let's go we're halfway through the days of uh, light curve christmas <laughs> <laughs> that's not confusing at all <laughs> we're halfway through the 12 days of light curves <laughs> the 12 days you of got it the 12 days of eight there you go. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> all right okay this is this another one, one. That yeah, I I can explain. I think okay. um, this is a flaring and spotted star. So spots, both of these phenomena, flares and spots, are things that we have on our own sun. So on our sun, we have um, darker spots, and because the sun rotates, these spots come and go into in and out of view. So when there's a big dark spot on the sun to the front of the sun that we are seeing, or the front of the star, then when we look at it, then the overall brightness of it is less. So kind of this would be the bottom of one of these one of these dips. Um, whereas when there's lots of spots, you see kind of it's darker. When there's no spots, it's brighter. So that explains this up and down emotion that we see. And these big spikes that we see, these very, very short period spikes, very rapid increases in brightness, uh, those are flares. So that's when stars, they have magnetic field lines and they get all entangled with one another. And then they, at some point, want to rearrange and they snap and then they just release lots and lots of energy and that is what we see as a as a flare. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of interesting studies we can do with flares. And different stars flare different amounts. Yes, they do. Uh, I, I noticed something else that I think is quite fun about this, but I want to see if you guys get. You see how it seems like the like the variations of the wiggles are kind of, you know, small at the beginning and then they grow. Yeah. Can anyone guess why? Increases of vibration. Oh, these aren't vibrations. These are spots. No, they're just spots. Then I am clueless. So as it turns out, spots evolve on, on the surface of stars. So if, 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 you're, if you really want to look into this, there's something called the butterfly diagram. You can Google it. It's really interesting. But what happens is that spots start at one latitude on, on the surface of a star or our sun. And then as they grow, as time goes on, the stars actually migrate from one place on the star to the other, and they grow in size when they do that. Oh my gosh. So this spots one is growing change. in size, basically going happening? Yeah, the, the spots that's are changing. Amazing. In this case, we see it. We see a spot that's getting bigger and moving more into view. Ooh. Stars are cool, man. I don't know, Nora. Stars are kind of cool. <laughs> whoa, whoa, are you jumping ship? <laughs> Don't come at me, bro. Don't come at me. That's kind of neat, though. <laughs> I thought we were friends. <laughs> we are friends, I swear. Okay, I'm just going to sit here and drink my eggnog. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Take my tea. That's fantastic. That is really interesting. So flaring and spotted stars. And this is number four that we have done. So we are getting towards the home stretch. All right, so let's yeah. go to number five. So this is this is the same example, same phenomena. We have flares and we have spots, but it's a slightly yeah. different example. Um, so this is to show that they, even if you have the same phenomena, that doesn't mean that it looks exactly the same. So especially spots, spots can take can look very, very different on different stars. So in this example, we have two different, at least two different large spots. And you can see one of them is kind of coming into view here. Maybe then it's disappearing. No, it's still here. You can see that it's still there. Spot is affecting that light curve slightly. They're both migrating and moving and changing in their own ways. But we have two spots, and wow. we see some, some some flares in there. So yeah, this is just a to show that even though we're showing some examples of these, they can these phenomena can look can look different. So why, Cole? Why don't you explain the difference of how you recognize if something is a spot or a pulsation? Yeah. 
That's a very good point. Well, sometimes it's not always very obvious. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> sometimes they can look very similar. Yes. Um, but typically, well, the spots don't have to look so clean. So if you have a pulsation, it will, one pulsation will always go up and then down. It'll create a perfect little S, sideways S, right? Spots don't have to do that. If you have one spot that's always in the same place on the star, doesn't grow, doesn't migrate, then it will look the same. And that's the hard part, because sometimes spots do that. But in the case where you have stars where the spots grow and migrate, they'll, it'll always look a little bit different. And that's what mm. you have here. So every time, every time the, the star turns, the spot looks a little bit different. And then mm. you see this, you see this, this kind of like growing where you see one feature moving through the light curve at a different speed than the other. And that's what happens with these bumps at the bottom. Mm. What determines whether or not uh, it'll a spot will migrate and move or not? Does it just depend on the activity of the star? Yes. So there, are, you have spots on the top on the surfaces of stars for different reasons. In a sun like, uh, sorry, in a star like our sun, it's because uh, there's it's it's called a dynamo mechanism. So just like the center of our Earth, where you have uh, these flows, these big convective cells that create a current that generates a magnetic field. Similar thing is happening in the outer layers of our sun. And you have a big dynamo that's generating an electric, uh, a magnetic field for these, uh, for these, this big, you know, magnetic field lines to curl around the star. But then when the star rotates, those field lines kind of get all messed up. They mm. get tangled into one another. And then sometimes they poke out of the surface and that's what generates a spot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and other times they want to they 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 tangle up so much that the best thing for them to do is kind of like merge and that's when you see these flares so relating this back to christmas so uh having uh activity yeah i'm gonna relate it back because everything relates back <laughs> every <laughs> this is a christmas episode so first thing in the morning i'm really excited for christmas so i am very active and then towards later in the day uh, after i've eaten like three or four meals i am really really lethargic and i'm not going to be as active can the same to be said about a star potentially depending on its activity <laughs> i'm telling you I'm always doing that stuff. anyway that's hard yeah. well so in a, in a way i guess you could say because young stars rotate very quickly <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. young yeah. stars so like like cassie when she wakes up the nice young star is yeah. ready to go it's rotating very rapidly right. and then jump out of bed throughout the star's life or throughout cassie's day there is these yeah. magnetic fields that interact with the material and slow the star down uh mm -hmm. there are there are foods that interact with cassie that slow her down <laughs> right. i love it <laughs> I am, you know what, 100% well done for uh, good. relating good. it back to Christmas. That's amazing. We had the science confirmed that I am basically like a star, basically. You yeah, are that's a amazing. Star. You are a star. That's fantastic. <laughs> All right, on to the next one. Let's do this. We got to get through these before I completely ruin this episode. Oh, I like Heartbeat these. star. Oh, I remember us talking about this one. All right, so tell me about the heartbeat star. Well, before you take this one, I just want to ask, what does this look like? And it's not related to Christmas, but more uh, the medical field. I mean, it looks like you're hooked up to like a, an EKG and it's like measuring your heartbeat. Perfect. Yep. I mean, it looks exactly like that. All right. Yeah. And then we can let Nora I'm explain just, why. Astronomers are very inventive in their naming scheme, which is why it's called a heartbeat star. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um, all right, so harpy stars are also binary stars. So we have two stars going around one another. And just like we had with the distortion in the first example that we had, where you have them go really close to one another so that they get distorted, the exact same thing is happening here. They get really close to one another and you have this massive distortion, then you have the eclipse and that happens again sometime after. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's, one, there's one little clarification that I would like to make. So That's normally awesome. you can imagine that the orbit of one star around another is like a star. I don't know. I just picked this up. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. So one Fair. star is in the middle and then the other uh -huh. star is in an orbit around it. 
right? And that's that's uh -huh. what happened with the previous set of stars. Okay. Now you have one star in the middle and the other star going around it, but they're always at the same distance. So the amount right. of distortion is always the same. Why don't you be the star and I'll orbit around it, baby? And then this is the second star orbiting around the first star. Gotcha. Okay, that was in the first example where the distortion was always the same. But in this example, we have it go really close and then go far away. And then you have it go really close. And every time that this star goes really close, you see this phenomena here where you have the drastic increase and then it goes further away, you see nothing, and then it comes close again. So, um, whereas in the other example where that hat, where we saw the hats and they were always kind of the same, the hats were the same, um, you had them always at the same distance from one another. So it's almost slingshotting it around and then pulling it back in again, exactly. essentially. Yes. So we have Got circles it. versus slingshots. Yes. Aw, so it's like mistletoe, basically. Like you stand under the mistletoe, you have a kiss and everything, got the heartbeat star, and then people, okay, all right. I'm, I'm relating them, you guys, I'm really trying here. I'm stretching as far as I can. All right, next one, getting through these. All right. <laughs> Whoa, so you got little ones going on in between these really big things. This is this is a mystery. So and what is going flares. on? We have flares yeah. coming we have up flares. here. So okay. we have a lot going on, so we have question marks. Okay, so yeah. I, have my, I have my guesses. So we have flares, which means it's a cool young star, probably. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have these bumps that go about every eight days or so, nine days. So that could be an orbit from a binary, or that could be rotation, something like that. And then on top of that, we have what seem to be two pulsations or maybe maybe very strong stable spots that are moving through it that seem to be fairly fixed. And those are the little bumps that go deep, shallow, deep, shallow. And I, I think those are going to be the, uh, the, the, the if those, those will be pulsations, I'm gonna guess. Mm -hmm. they're, they're All right, so, so what's your best guess then what you think this is? Some, I'm going to guess something like a T Tauri star, T Tauri star. And that's something that's a young star that's just on its way to being formed, a bunch of materials falling in, you know, very strong magnetic fields. Sometimes they do pulsate, although now I'm thinking maybe T Tauri stars are more massive than the stars that I'm thinking of here. But something young star, magnetically active, rotating pulsations. What's causing the big, the, the big I, waves? I think the big waves is going to be rotation. It's, it could be rotation. So it's gone from one side? Uh, or you just have a spot somewhere. <laughs> so you think this, so you think this is a giant spot on one side? Yeah. This is due to, so you think the big wave variation is due to spots and the little thing is due to pulsations? Yeah, that or a binary. And then you could have another star, a second star that's there that's causing it to be distorted. And then we just see the orbit as as it's sometimes more distorted, sometimes looks like a sphere still. I feel pretty confident in Cole's answer. <laughs> <laughs> I feel pretty confident in it. That sounds good. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I love it. It's like a mystery. It's like the mystery package under uh, the, the Christmas tree and you're not quite sure and you've tried shaking it a little bit and you're like, mm, it seems deceptive. I love it. Got to have the mystery uh, present you under the tree. You never okay. shake you should never shake a present because what if there's a puppy inside? <laughs> gently shake cold, gently. <laughs> and if it barks back, put it back down. <laughs> also don't give uh, animals as Christmas gifts. It's a terrible idea. Anyway, that's my uh, public service announcement for the day. Okay, so uh, we have Uno Moss, Uno Moss. One more. All right, here we go. What the heck is going on here? The the patient is needs to be what's the defibrillators or something? What is going on? If that's your heartbeat, please speak to a medical professional yes. immediately. <laughs> immediately. <laughs> Put the T down and please call <laughs> an emergency professional. All right. We've got some erratic dips going on. I mean, it's not even uniform going on through here. Not an eclipsing binary. Eclipsing binary dips or planet dips are regular. These are not. Mm -hmm. So the other interesting thing is, is that the, there seems to be like a maximum level mm -hmm. and everything goes down. Okay. Right. So I, what I think, this would be my guess. I think it's um, maybe a disc. 
around a star that's blocking out light? That would be my guess. I think there's something, I think you have a, a certain level of the star, and I think there's a lot of stuff blocking out the light from that star. Mm -hmm. And I think a disc or dust or something around that star could do it. That's my guess. Very irregular though. Yeah. Maybe you'd expect that to be more regular. Well, if it could just be full of blobs of gas. <laughs> so this is the day after Christmas or uh, Christmas uh, evening, and you've had like three dinners or whatever. And um, uh, this is the after effects. Or it's Christmas morning and it's after you open up all the presents and you have all the scattered, uh, you know, all, all the scattered wrappings everywhere and it's just completely a mess. Take this your the, pick. The decibel level of children screaming or me screaming when you get something that you like. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Cole's receiving a Star Wars gift of some kind or something along those lines, right? <laughs> like, towards the end, like, uh, we're getting close to the 20 day, why would it get something where it's like, it, it doesn't even go up, it's like, it kind of like bumps up a little bit, and then it shoots up? Like, why would something like that happen? So if best you estimate. You, you could imagine that so when you have when you have a star going in front of another star or a planet it's solid right and then so that it, it blocks the same amount of light constantly now imagine that you have um this that this definitely is not what's happening here but imagine you have a torn up planet and it's just a bunch of rocks mm -hmm. And some some places it's a little bit more dense still, and other places it's just material still, like chunks flying off the back of it. And then you wouldn't see anything regular. You would just see chaotic random dips, sometimes deeper, sometimes less deep, sometimes nothing. If I had to guess, I'd say something similar to Nora's disk hypothesis. Um, but yeah. Okay, cool. So mystery star number, star exoplanet number two. There is a lot going on here. Uh, we don't know what it is, but I think you guys gave us some really good ideas. So submit your ideas. What do you think is going on here? Um, that's fantastic. Well, thank you. Uh, special guest Cole coming in uh, clutch with our holiday episode. And of course, seeing Nora as always. Um, I just want to say out to our audience, thank you again for joining us and thank you for always engaging and asking great questions. You have helped drive a lot of our episodes of what we're going to talk about and things around it. So continue on, please uh, get in touch. Uh, we're going to take a Christmas break. I know we just came back and we're already going to take a break, but it's at the end of the year and we all need to decompress and relax. So I hope that you guys get to do the same with you and yours. And Cole and Nora, as always, <laughs> good to see you, Cole. We might have to um, bring you back on in future episodes if you That'd wouldn't mind. I'll, I'll get another <laughs> number for next time. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. Okay, thank you very much and good to see you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.